ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصه ما فلا يضر الا نفسه اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني خالق بشر من طين فإذا صويته ونفخت فيه من روح فقعوا له ساجدين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأخرة من لساني يفكه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وزقنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا وزقنا اجتنابا Today I want to talk in more detail <coughs> about the creation of man, his biological creation, which we usually call life, and the creation of his ruh, his sometimes translated as soul, and the merging of these two, and this whole process. So what I want to start off talking about is the different words used in Quran for the creation of man. Quran uses many words of the creation of man in the process of the, the pregnancy and, and embryology. But I am talking here about the process of actually creating the original man, the first man. And over here there's about few important words or few important Quranic terms that need to be kept in mind. The first is, uh, the first point that I want to make is a general statement about the creation, the process of creation of the universe. And in this creation, this world of creation that we see, right, all of the stars and everything, the Quran defines all of these galaxies and the quasars and the sta stars as a sama al dunya. This is the sky of the dunya, right? This is the sky, sama uh, dunya, the masabiha, right? And we have ordained, or we have adorned the sky of the earth with all of these stars, right? So this is the sky of this creation. So how did this start? <clears throat> now, before I start talking about this, it is important for me to mention that there is a difference between human observation and science. There's a difference. Human observation is the ability to observe anything, whether you're observing from a telescope or you're observing from a microscope, observation is observation. As far as human observation is concerned in this century, in the last century, meaning for the last 200 some years, human observation has been very acute, very definite. But the conclusions of those observations have sometimes been very off, have been very different from what the Quran teaches us. So what is important is to see the observation that we have had of the universe and what we know of the universe and the creation of the universe. The observation part of it and what Quran says, the congruency between the two. So I want to make some general statements about the creation of the universe. And then after that I will talk about the uh, creation of man specifically. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created two worlds. Alimul Khalq, Alimul Amr. I've talked about this before, but I want to talk today just as a frame of reference. Alimul Khalq, the world of creation, this world that we are in, everything takes time and space. Right? Everything takes time and space. This Alimul Khalq is a world of time and space. Allah is over the world of time and space. Allah is not trapped in time. Allah is not trapped in time. Allah created Zaman and He created Makan. He created the place and He created time. In fact, time and space is the same phenomenon. If you know a little bit of physics, you'll know the formula where time and space is the same phenomenon. For there to be time, there has to be space. To go from one point to the next point, there has to be space. And if there's space, then there's time. So in this world of creation, there is time and space. The fabric of time and space exists. And Allah created this world of space and time in how many days? Six days. Even though, generally Allah says, إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا فَيَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونُ He says, be and it is. 
But for this world of creation, this world of universe, it went through six different phases. The seventh day is when? Seventh day is? When, on which day will the day of judgment take place? On the day of Jum'ah. Right? The seventh day, the day of Jum'ah is the day of what? Gathering? Jum'ah, right? Gathering the people. Yawmul Hashar, Yawmul Din is the seventh day. Okay? You can say the sixth day in, in the timeline of phases of different things, the sixth day was the creation of Adam alayhi So there's this world of creation. Everything in this world of creation, even the creation of the world of creation took time and space. But there's another world. And that is the world of Alim al Amr. The world of Amr. The world of B. When you go to Jannah, when you go to Jannah, you will merely think of something and you will what? Have it. Right? You will think of something. You want, you want uh, 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 the fresh meat of a bird. It will be there. There's no time and space. And in this world of Amr, in this world of no time and space, in the world of the unseen, the one that is above this world of creation, in that they are the angels, and the angels are made of light. In the world, in the world, in that world, the angels when they travel, they travel without the restrictions of time and space. Jibrail was in the seventh heaven when Yusuf was being thrown into the well. He went from the seventh to the earth in a man, man, matter of moments. Caught him. Because the angels, they're not necessarily restricted in the world of time and space the way we are. Okay? Now, having said that, so there's the world of creation, which is this world. And everything we observe in this world. And then there's the world of Adam and Abba, be and it is. That's where the angels are, that's where Barak was from, right? You'll find this interesting. Again, I don't want to go into too much details because... The topic I want to talk about is the creation of man in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. But you'll find it interesting that when the Prophet went for Mi'raj, right, we all know that his bed was left hot and when he came back it was still warm. Because when you go at a certain speed, when you go at a certain speed, what happens to, what happens to time? Time stops, right? Uh, Einstein's theory is that if you go one-tenth of the speed of light, time will stop. Einstein also has the twins paradox, which is if there are two people on earth, they're both twins, they have the same age, and one goes in a rocket at the speed of light, and he comes back after 60 earth years, the brother will still be in his 20s, and the older brother will be like 60s, okay? So, when the prophet went for Mi'raj, and what does the word Barak mean, interestingly? Barak means what? Lightning, right? So, Barak is the plural of lightning. So when something is going at the speed of many lights, right, the speed of many lights, then time stops. I'm here only showing the relationship between this world of khalq, the world of creation, and the world of amr, in the world where everything is me and it is. So the ruh of man, the angels was the first creation. The angels was the first creation made of light. In the world of Alim al Amr. The second creation that is from that world, the world that does not is not restricted to time and space. Like our imagination is not restricted to time and space. And when it comes to Allah, the Prophet says, Ta'budullah ka'anna kathara. Worship Allah as if you see him. It's the world of imagination. Worship Allah as if you see him. Ta'budullah ka'anna kathara. Worship Allah as if you see him. This world of you know, imagine, I'm not going to go into details about this, but the point I'm going to make here is that the first creation was the angels in that world of Adam and Amr. And the second creation was the arwah, the ruh of man. The, the soul of man. The ruh of man. So this is one component of his creation. And this component of his creation is, is foreign to the process of any form of evolution. Right? Even though Darwinian evolution is problematic anyway. I'll talk about that maybe in a second if I get a chance. But the world of the human rule is foreign to even to this world of creation. It's from another world. Right? And if you know the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the life is there. The baby is there. Life is even in oneself. 
life is even in what? One cell. But after 120 days, the ruh comes into the fetus, right? The embryo of the baby, and it then becomes a human being because a human being is a component of the animal self, the animal body, which is the, the, the biological being, and the ruh. When these two come together, he becomes insan. Right? The process of his creation, the Quran calls him Basha. Which I won't go into details about that. But what I want to mention is the first point I want to mention, you'll find this very interesting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa is qala rabbuka lil malaikati and remember when Allah said to the angels, Inni khalikun, inni khalikun basharam min teen, I'm going to create man from teen. Now, there are different words in the Quran. Uh, in the Quran for the creation of man. Teen is one of them. Teen is the mixture of turab, which is dust, and water. Right? Khalaqa kullu hayy min al ma. We created every living thing from water. When turab and ma come together, it becomes teen, which is clay. Clay is the beginning of organic matter. Right? And so the, 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 the turab then goes through two phases, according to the Quran. One is Sansalin Sansalin kahama masnoon Sansal means clay Extracts of clay Extracts of clay Sansalin min hamain masnoon From a black mud That is altered So it becomes altered meaning it goes from the phase of being uh, Organic to uh, Sorry, inorganic to Organic So, and then Sansalin kal fakhar Sansalin and extract that becomes like pottery, like clay, because then it becomes hard under the sun. First it's wet, right? And it is altered and and like clay that's uh, movable, that is black in color. So Allah says, Sansalin min sansalin kahama im masnoon is one word. Then sansalin kal fakhar is the other word, which is the fact that when he becomes like this, clay when he becomes like this pottery right what does Allah do to this body right what does Allah do to this body Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says look Allah says to the angels in if lil and when Allah said to the angels in khalikum basharum min teen, I'm going to create a bashar a human being from lean from mud and from mud and water which is clay okay I'm going to create a human being out of this mud and water. Okay? And then, فَإِذَا But when? But what happens? This is now. فَإِذَا سَوَيْتُهُ When I have fashioned him. When I have balanced him out. When I've made him right. When I've finished him, the finishing touches. Right? فَإِذَا سَوَيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ And I have blown into that body, the the body from my ruh when I blow into it then do what then all of you prostrate go down to him go down to him in sujood to this being when when the ruh was put in not before that see when shaitan saw him he said <laughs> I'm better than he I've been created from fire You've created him from, from water and mud. He was right because he was looking at the external aspect of man. Meaning in a sense that fire is more subtle creation. They can be a hundred miles away and then come back. You know, they can fly according to the Quran and, and get news from different places. So they're in many ways better than human beings. So, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَوَيْتُهُ وَنَفَقْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ فَقْعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ فَسَجَدَ مَلَائِكَةُ كُلُّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ So all of the angels, they bow down to Adam. إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ إِذْ إِسْتَقْبَرَوْ كَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ And so, أَنَا خَيْرًا مِنْهُ خَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِنْ طِينَ And then Allah says, فَخْرُجْ مِنْهَا إِنَّكَ رَجِيمٌ And then the point I want to make here, this is the spiritual dimension of his creation, the ruh. But his biological dimension, as I mentioned, there's water and there's clay. The, the water is ma in the Quranic terminology, water. 
right? And over here, I want to mention something very interesting. You will find this, uh, I find it, I find this, I can't get enough of this actually. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, just as a frame of reference, the beginning of inorganic world and the beginning of organic world come together in one ayah of the Quran. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam ladina kafaru. Do those people who deny the truth, do they not see, do they not observe? And what's interesting, when I was talking about science and observation, right? Ra'a. Afala yanduruna ila al Ra'a means observe. Do not see, do not observe. Right? So, Alam yara alladhina kafaru anna samawati wal ardi kanata. Do you not see, did those who deny the truth not see that the heavens and the earth were one entity? Fakanata. Then what happened? Alam yara alladhina kafaru anna samawati wal ardi kanata. Do not those who deny the truth see, see the heavens and the earth was one entity. And then Allah says, Ratqan fataqnahuma. And then we blew it up. Then we blew it up. So, in Alim al Amr, two creations were created Malaika, the angels, and the Ruh of man. Then, somewhere in the process, there was a big bang. This is what's being referred to here. Do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth was one entity, and then we blew it up. <coughs> this is the beginning of the creation of the uh, or, uh, inorganic world, right? The physical world that we see. And then what happened? Everything blew up, and from there, these suns, you know, the suns we have, they're like stars. Stars are as some stars are hundred times bigger than our sun. Right? And so the sun, all these suns, millions and gazillions of these suns were made. And from the sun, some particles came out of the sun. One of them is the earth, right? Some rocks like Mercury and Venus and Mars and Jupiter. These were parts of the sun. And as the sun started to cool down, these planets came into existence by breaking away from the sun. Okay? Now when this process happened, different things happened, I can't, I'm not going to talk about the Qur'an and the physical creation, but I'm only trying to mention that the earth was part of the sun, and then the earth broke away from the sun, okay? So everything was exploding, everything exploded, and then everything started to cool down. As the process of cooling down was occurring, rain came into existence, water came into existence. And so then the next part becomes important there. Allah says, Alam yara ladhina kafaru anna samawati wal ardi kanata fataqnahuma wa ja'alna min al-ma And we made from water kullu, kullu shay'in hay. Every living thing came from that water, the process of water. Afala yu'minun, will you not believe? So the beginning of the physical creation and the beginning of life, both mentioned in this ayah, this verse of the Quran, clearly. And uh, even uh, if you, uh, anybody could read this and then see this very clearly. Now, as far as the process of life, meaning the evolutionary process in the Quran, as far as that is concerned, in Surah Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned something very interesting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nur, وَمِنْهُمْ Allah, After mentioning Allah خَلَقَ كُلُّ حَيِّ مِنَ الْمَاءِ I created from water every living thing Allah then mentioned وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَمْشِي عَلَى بَطْنِهِ And they are amongst those animals that they crawl on their stomachs وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَمْشِي عَلَى رِجْلَيْنِ And then there are those that walk on their two legs So this is the process of coming out of the water You become amphibians From amphibians, the birds come into existence. And if you know the relationship between birds and, and the dinosaurs, right? And so, because a lot of dinosaurs were also two-legged, and a lot of the dinosaurs flew too. In fact, we believe in, 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 I mean, science alludes to the fact, points to the fact, Allah knows best, but that the bird, the hollowness of the bird's bones comes from the reptiles. Anyway, so Allah says, وَخَلَقَ كُلُّ حَيِّ مِنَ الْمَاءِ We created from water every living thing, and then, فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَمْشِي عَلَى بَطْنِهِ And they're those that crawl on their stomachs, like the snake and the amphibians, okay? And then, وَمِنْهُمْ يَمْشِي عَلَى رِجْلَيْنِ Two. 
وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَمْشِي عَلَىٰ أَرْبَعَ And then there are those that walked with two, then there were those that walked on four. This is before the creation of man. Because the other word used for man, so interestingly, is سَوَيْتُهُ رَجُلًا And we made man رَجُل Right? You maybe sometimes heard in... Um, maybe you heard sometimes, uh, even in the Urdu language, uh, in the Urdu language, they sometimes they say the word, uh, uh, like for example, Iqbal uses the word, uh, uh, the word Rijal, do you use this word in Urdu? Rajul. Uh, Rajul means man. But the word Rajul actually means to be on your legs. And so the beginning of man was what we call the Homo erectus. Right? The one, what was very profound about man was he was able to stand on his two feet with his spine, right? <laughs> and so the word rajula is also there. Rajul, rajul means, literally means your feet, your legs, right? The Arabs are here, they'll tell you that. So, so in this process, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَمْشِي عَلَىٰ بَطْنِهِ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَمْشِي عَلَىٰ رِجْلَيْنِ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَمْشِي عَلَىٰ أَرْبَى there, we created from water every living thing and then there were those that crawled on their stomachs and then there were those that were on their two feet and then there were those like primates or mammals that were on their four feet and then finally man was created that was on his legs that was his on, on his legs so this process is there in the Quran and the reason I mention this is that it's very important inshallah I'll finish in my second khutbah uh, now the main point I wanted to actually make So the creation of man's ruh is mentioned The creation in the process of man's life His biological life is mentioned And as I mentioned life And the other point that's very important to mention here are, I'll mention two three points that are very important Number one Animals don't have ruh Ruh is specifically a unique quality of human beings Animals don't have ruh They don't have soul Nothing is There's no malaika Tulmaut going to an, a dead animal and extracting his soul That doesn't happen Nor is ruh equated to aql That's also different Just making something clear Second thing Nabuwa Nabuwa Messengerhood Is a function of the ruh and the reason I mention this is important because jinns have no nabuah. Now in this world, when the world blew up and then the stars were made and from that stars the earth came and from the earth the water started to come down because of the nitrogen and the different uh, things in the atmosphere. From that life came. And from that life came the animal self, the animal being of the human being, animal side of the human being. Now Allah took the ruh, which was originally created, that part of man, and this animal part of man and put it together. Now what are some <coughs> jinns don't have ruh. Jinns again don't have jinns don't have ruh. Jinns have a body and it dies. It has no ruh. It doesn't have the capacity to see into the other world as like the human beings do. Now what I want to mention here what's very very important is this. There are some things that we can see that are animalistic about us. We have animalist and our, our body, our body itself doesn't care about halal and haram. But there's some things that point to that there's something greater about man. Something significant about man that's just beyond being just an animal. One of the biggest, you know, the this process of as Darwinian evolution, because Darwinian evolution has many problems, I'm not going to go into that, just to mention one thing, that if we came from apes. We also have the problem that we can't take transfusion or the organs of the apes because even though externally we are very similar, physiologically we are very similar to apes, right? They look like us in some ways. But if you did a heart if you did a heart transplant or a blood transplant of an animal, of an ape, what would happen to a human being? He would die. So even though we're very, very, and it's very interesting, I had this conversation with a very intelligent microbiologist and this is basically the point he was making, which is that externally we may have this process, you may say, but internally, we're so different, even within intraspecies, meaning from one monkey to the next monkey, right? If you do a blood transfusion, the monkeys will die. And so, or, or if, you, if you take the hormones, the, if you take a, uh, the hormones of a monkey and put it in man, it's not going to work. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is 
what is unique about man? Then, what is, okay, so he has this animal self, and he has this component that's outside the process of evolution. We will take you from one stage. So this, this happened. This process of evolution happened. And Darwin wasn't the first one to think of this. Actually, if, uh, if I have... Uh, I'm going to take two minutes to explain to you one of the interesting concepts that uh, Rumi, the great poet of Islam, he gives. He says, you know, in his poetry he says that when I was a mineral and, and then when I went to the next phase I became a plant. I died. As a mineral I died, I became a plant. And then from plant I became an animal. And from an animal I became a human being. So when I die again and then rise again, it'll be something greater than what I was on earth. This was one of the po his poems. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make, this process of evolution, process of evolution is there in Islam. Obviously, the, the, uh, certain things had to be before certain things. Grass had to be there before the certain animals were there. So there was a process of evolution. But not Darwinian evolution. Not Darwinian evolution. Instead of things just happening automatically like a clock, right? Every time there was a time for a change, Allah said, kun, be, and that change occurred. And that change occurred as that process was happening. But from an observational perspective, there is complete congruency between what the terminology of Quran is, the Quranic terminology, and complete congruency from what has been observed in the world of science. Now, what is unique about man? Now, of course, this is a very long topic in itself, but I'm going to give only like three or four points here. One is that it's so interesting, right? Man is the only animal that decorates his food before he eats it. You know, you ever seen those, you've been to those restaurants where they decorate your food? Like, make, why? Why does human, why do we have this aesthetic nature? Why do we have, why are we in awe with beauty, right? Why are we in awe with perfection? Why are we in awe with like looking at space, constantly looking up as if we belong to the beyond, right? A part of us yearns for something beyond. Why do human beings, when they are looking at a flower, they are in awe, right? And, and, like a dog that thinks and smells not going to look to the sky and think anything other than that. What's interesting about human beings, even little children, you know what's interesting? Even a three-year-old can understand the concept of God. This is, this is, you know, case studies after case studies. Children believe in the unseen. You know, children are the ones that talk about, oh, there's a monster under my bed. Children are the ones that say, oh, there's a monster behind the closet, right? Children are the ones that like to watch cartoons in which beings, cartoons do very, you know, uh, unhuman things, meaning very extraordinary, supernatural things, right? It's something about being human that is foreign to the concept of just simply a process of evolution, right? And man is so stuck, so possessed, so obsessed with the idea of something transcendent. If I do something in life, it has to have meaning. Right? My life has to have a purpose, it has to have meaning. Animals don't think like that. Right? My life can't just be meaningless, I have to have a purposeful life. And man is so obsessed with the idea of God, that every civilization, every culture, has always looked up to the skies and said, there has to be something more. Right? It's almost like we're looking back to our original creation, which has to do with the arwah and the ruh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us.